भी At last, I've got my hands on an Air Arms TX200 HC. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load, and this gun is pretty much a legend if you're into your air guns. And this is the new updated version, this is the HC, the Hunter Carbine version, and it is very, very nice too. So let's give you the full specs on this rifle then. First of all, this one's in 2.2, 0.22, however you want to say it, and it's weighing in at 8.5 or 8.5 pounds. So it's quite a weighty little thing, that's on scope by the way. Overall length is 38 inches, and the barrel length, and it's quite, got quite a short barrel at that, is 9 inches. So it's a stubby little thing this is but it is super super accurate and it is just gorgeous gorgeous to shoot now those of you who watch me know that I'm a lefty yep yeah, I'm a left hooker but I didn't have a left uh, hand rifle to play with I only had this one that, that, that is on loan to me and it's a righty but I managed to shoot this left handed because the the stock isn't too harsh it was, it was a little uncomfortable to shoot it left handed but I managed and I did alright to be honest um, shooting in uh, my backyard um, just doing a bit of accuracy testing uh, my groups weren't that bad 25 yards uh, this is my makeshift target by the way, my printer ran out of ink and I didn't have any targets to hand. Well, there's my first uh, sort of uh, effort at printing the target and then as you can see ran out of ink so scrap that, just drew around some pellet tins and made my own. So yeah, um, these are all five shot groups at 25 yards, uh, kind of getting my eye in there I know, but uh, those last two ones are quite good so I was quite happy with them anyway um, and yeah real, really uh, quite accurate well very accurate considering the length of the barrel and that's a Walther barrel on this TX as well and an Italian stock I love it on the, some reviews where they say oh yeah it's a thorough British rifle hmm it's got a German barrel and an Italian stock Okay, <laughs> so, uh, but the gun is absolutely superb, superb rifle. And yeah, it is a British rifle. And it's uh, just a gorgeous, gorgeous looking one at that. So let's jump straight in then with this uh, rack and low review. Talk about, about the stock. Like I said, this is a right handed one, it's uh, beach. Uh, the Dudum in left hand and it is just really really nice now I've got a confession to make as well I put a little bit of a dink in this rifle the guys that lent to me aren't going to be too impressed but see that there my wedding ring done that so that's marriage for you damaging your guns 
Yeah, a little bit of a ding. Hopefully that'll polish out. I do hope so. So that's why I generally wear gloves, just in case you're wondering. Not only do I not get all my fingerprints all over the uh, metalwork of a gun, but I don't damage them either. So, yeah, but I should take my ring off, I know, but knowing me, I'll forget to put it on and then the missus will wonder why I haven't got my wedding ring on. But anyway, moving on. So, gorgeous, gorgeous beach stock. And it's got like fish scales that are laser engraved instead of your usual sort of checkering. Now, some people may like that, some people may not like it, but I think it's quite nice. It's different and it does offer quite a bit of traction, to be honest. But the stock is real comfortable anyway. Uh, pistol grip, nice and chunky very comfortable and you've got like the uh, rosewood end there got all fluff over it with uh, the Air Arms logo on the end there with the pistol grip the recoil pad just your usual sort of rubber recoil pad and these are quite good, good these uh, ventilated recoil pads that do make it quite useful to uh, store your pellets if you just push them in there it's always handy if you're out on a hunt you can bang at least uh, 20 or 30 pellets in either side of that uh, recoil pad so that's always worth noting rather than rummaging around for them in your pocket so yeah, stunning rifle, the stunning stock. The only thing I don't like about this stock is, if I can just get it in the camera right, you can see daylight through this bit. Well, I know it's not generally the stock, but I just don't like the way you can see daylight through that bit. Um, I haven't seen many rifles, especially high-end rifles, um, of this sort of specification, you know, like the, uh, say the Blackline HW97, uh, the Walther LGU. Not seen uh, that on those guns, but on this, I don't know. It just niggled me. I'm a bit finicky when it comes to rifles and, you know, when you're review reviewing them, I've got to tell you guys all about it. So, but yeah. Would that bother you? Mm, don't know. If you're out hunting, would water sort of get behind that and make it hard to clean? I don't know. I suppose if you do get this thing soaked, you'd take the stock off anyway and just give it a good wipe. But no, that's just me being a bit sort of finicky. I've got to moan about something. I just didn't like seeing daylight through the side of it. And also, it's a bit of a rattler as well. It's the uh, linkage on the underlever that's a bit of a rattler. But apart from that, I can't really moan about the gun. Now I'll just show you guys the uh, TX200HC in Air Arms' brochure. Uh, that's the one we're talking about right there. This one's in a walnut stock, this one in the brochure. We've got Beach sitting in front of us here. Um, and this just tells you sort of a uh, bit of the uh, history and pedigree of this rifle. Also shows the Mark III as well, which is the same gun. Um, obviously just without the shorter barrel. Slightly different um, cocking lever as well. Under lever you've got like the knurled uh, sort of grip on the end of it there. Let's show you in the real thing. And that does make life easier. Um, I'm not so keen on these, uh, let's just get it, the like ball bearing catch as I like to call, call them. I always prefer it when uh, it's like the, the Virox have the button that you press. I'm more of a fan of that myself. But this is uh, nice and solid. Um, you do have to sort of give it a bit of a pinch when you sort of release it but no it is it is cool you've got like a little uh, 
buffer there as well to stop it slamming on the barrel when you close it like like that. But this barrel, talking about the barrel, is actually yet shrouded and silenced, which is pretty cool. It's uh, very sleek. Uh, you wouldn't think that's a silenced barrel, but it is. Um, you can also, if you want to, sort of go the extra mile and uh, sort of make it even more quiet by uh, unscrewing uh, this end cap and, and that will reveal an internal thread which you can actually then add your own silencer to. So, um, but it's up to you, you know, I found this thing, even in 2.2, was fairly quiet for a Springer as well. Um, but yeah, it's it's really good. You, I mean, you wouldn't think that that barrel was silenced, but it is nice and chunky. The actual profile of it is. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. That'll save you sort of spending uh, money on a silencer. Uh, but it depends what you're going to use the gun for. It's a, a great uh, target rifle as well as a hunter. Obviously, its main purpose is a hunting rifle. Hence, HC Hunter Carbine. But this gun's good for anything, absolutely. Um, but now back to the uh, the brochure. Um, like I said, it's the same as the Mark III, but just shortened down. Uh, just the only difference is, uh, like I say, that uh, that cocking grip on the uh, on the cocking lever. Apart from that, same gun. Um, brilliant guns, though. Uh, the air arms are just just flicking through uh, this brochure. Uh, Ultimate Sporter, I've reviewed that, that is a great, great gun. Uh, but this is a real good option, this rifle is, if you don't want to go down the line of, say, a PCP and you just want to stick with a Springer, then real good option, real good option. So, let's talk about the rest of the gun then. So, the scope, by the way, is the test scope and it's actually an air arm, sitting on an air arm, which is unusual for me. Because usually I just bang this scope on anything that I've got. But let's take a closer look at the actual uh, the metal work on the gun. Um, chemically blued uh, and it is really nice. Uh, nice and glossy. And you've got TX, get it in the light there. Got TX's, uh, TX200 down the side, made in England. Air Arms logo. Real nice. So the trigger, absolutely superb. They call this the CD trigger or computer design trigger. Now, isn't everything computer design these days? Don't know why they call it that, but but yeah, the trigger is real nice, real nice, very smooth, very um, a little spongy, I'd say. This the second stage is a little spongy, but. I found it very nice compared to a lot of uh, triggers that I've pulled uh, on air rifles. It's very nice. It's one of the best you'll get on on a spring rifle like this, without doubt. Um, real nice trigger though. Really nice. Uh, fully adjustable. Well, adjustable, not fully adjustable. You can't adjust like the uh, the blade or anything. But it's adjustable for as good as you'd want. Um, and I like them. To be honest, a little heavy, uh, especially for a hunting rifle. But that's uh, that's me, my preference. The trigger guard is metal, nice and chunky, got a nice profile to it. That's pretty cool. And then moving along the rest of the gun. Obviously we talked about the barrel that's shrouded and uh, got an internal silencer on it and then you've got like the knurling on the uh, under lever to aid with grip when cocking the gun now cocking the gun is uh, it's a bit of it's a bit of a a bit of an effort nothing major but the only reason it is a bit more of an effort than say the mark 3 or um tx is sort of previous to this is obviously the shorter barrel then you've got a shorter under lever so there's more leverage you've got to sort of put into it or more muscle you've got to put into it but when we cock the gun and this is another gripe with these bear traps I do like these bear traps these anti bear traps um, 
the thing I don't like about them on a hunting rifle like this is the noise when you cock these things. But, you know, that's me just having a bit of a moan. So you press the, the uh, anti-bear trap, obviously, to release uh, the lever to close it up once you've loaded your pellet directly into the barrel. You can hear that clicking lot as I go, go past that uh, anti-bear trap again. And there's your breech. Load those pellets straight into the barrel. Into that uh, Walther barrel. Uh, using this left handed or right handed don't really make any difference. What I found is it's a very safe gun to use. Like I said, let's just close it up again. When you're cocking it, obviously finger away from the trigger, but you'll find that your hands are away from the trigger anyway because you need one hand here. I'm doing this left handed. Um, to operate the anti-bear trap and obviously the other hand is going to be on on the lever so you'll cock it put your pellet in and then you go press the anti-bear trap then to release and get past those notches and then you can uh, close the gun up automatic safety I, got, I like the safety but I don't like the fact that you can't really put it back on. Once you've taken that safety off, you can't put it back on. Don't really see the point in that myself. It, it'd be nice if you could uh, if you could just put that safety catch back on. But hey ho, um, I don't really know why they've done that. I, I just I'm a big big fan of safety catches that you can put on and off whenever you want. Um, but yeah, that's the safety. I mean, it is in a good position. Um, you can sort of catch, grab that with your thumb if you're a lefty. Uh, and same, obviously, if you're a righty, you can uh, catch it with your thumb to uh, disengage it. You can actually decock this rifle as well. Uh, you've got to uh, pull the trigger, obviously holding the... Uh, uh, the anti-bear trap and then what you have to do then is just pull it slightly back and then it's under spring pressure then so just be careful and then that's the rifle decocked which is uh, a good uh, a good thing to have if you want to decock the rifle given whatever sort of uh, hunting situation you're in you know with uh, Nothing's appearing for a while and you've uh, you've cocked it and you thought you was going to take a shot and then you're like, ah, I missed that one. You can decock it to save sort of uh, keeping the spring squashed for ages. But yeah, the bear trap can't really fault it. Um, it's been around for uh, quite a while now, you know, and it's just saves you losing your fingers when loading these guns. So. Safety is uh, is a great thing to have on uh, on any gun, and uh, big thumbs up to the uh, to our arms for uh, coming up with a real good uh, anti bear trap. You know it it works, and that's it. Here's just a close up of the anti bear trap device. Basically, just a cantilever that uh, engages with those grooves there to. Pretty much stop this gun slamming shut if you ever caught the trigger while you was loading it. Uh, that is what makes the noise as you load the gun. Uh, as those notches pass the lever, it sort of just clicks past them. It's a little bit irritating. Um, obviously not when you're plinking or target shooting, but if you was hunting, uh, I think that would annoy you a little bit because it is fairly noisy. But like I said, you can get around that by actually keeping your finger on the cantilever as you cock the gun. So basically the teeth or notches there pass the lever without sort of clicking along them. So there are ways around it, but you'll get the feel of the gun anyway. But uh, it's always good to have safety features like that on, a, on an under lever without doubt.
Now the linkages on the underlever of this rifle are really quite chunky and they're fairly unobtrusive. They do come out a little bit, well, quite a fair bit, so just don't get your finger or anything sort of caught in there. But uh, once the uh, underlever is down, they pretty much sort of just go into the uh, fore end well out of the way. But uh, nice and chunky. They do rattle a little bit like I uh, demonstrated earlier, but um, everything's nice and smooth with this gun. But there just is a little bit of a bit of rattle there. You know, you've got to think about these things if you're hunting. You want a nice silent gun, especially when loading it, but it's just that bear trap. That does make a row. You can avoid that when you do cock it by pressing the anti-bear trap and just going past it and obviously release it then to, you know, uh, make sure it, uh, it has its safety feature sort of... Uh, in place because if you keep your finger on that thing and you do catch the trigger with anything um, it's going to fly past the uh, anti-bear trap and do damage to either the gun or your finger so so just bear that in mind um, but uh, it's just noisy you'd get used to doing that I think out in the field Plenty of scope groove there to bang your glass on top of. Plenty of room there just to get it set up for your own eye relief. I'd personally like it if our arms fitted like uh, a scope mounting block like uh, like what BSA do on the BSA Lightning. Um, that would be pretty cool. That would really sort of set this rifle off. Uh, I always worry about mounting the uh, scopes on these grooves. It's just it seems like they don't offer enough grip. I know they do, but I don't know. I always like it when there's a, a nice chunky block on there to mount on. But that's just me. But that uh, I think that'd be a nice sort of uh, extra on this rifle. But yeah, definitely worthy of uh, a decent. Uh, scope this rifle is obviously doesn't come with uh, open sights this is a hunting rifle so as you'd expect you've got to bang a scope on it uh, that's what it's made for now the handbook is not bad actually um, gives you a few uh, safety pointers which is always good especially if you're a new shooter um, all your sort of do's and don'ts and uh, this that and the other uh, it also comes with a lock as well, a trigger lock. I forgot to show that on camera, I've left that uh, in the house. Um, but there's some good photographs in like the um, the main part of the manual, just sort of showing you how to adjust the trigger, how to cock and load, load the gun, this, that and the other. Nice clear photographs there. And then you've got like your parts list. with an exploded diagram. So fairly uh, sort of minimalistic, fairly basic the uh, manual is. And there's a cheap piece on this rifle. Nice and elegant. Beautiful lines on this rifle as well. But when I was a boy this gun was my dream rifle. TX200 never did get one. I think I ended up buying a BSA Superstar. Ended up going for that. So I did get an underlever in the end, but uh, just not the TX. But I've got one here to play with for a bit, so it's all good. But guys, seriously, stunning, stunning rifle. Really, I should have on the table um, Two other guns that I've reviewed, the Walther LGU underlever, which is a superb underlever rifle, and of course the HW97, 
the black line version what a stunning gun that was too um, I mean those three guns well watch the videos I've done on the LGU the Walther and um, the black line watch those videos watch this video make your mind up um, those three guns well this gun and those other two guns are amazing I, I don't know what I'd actually go for to be honest um, this this thing is you know and the the 97 definitely have pedigree behind them there's no no doubt about that the black line um, sorry the LGU the Walther kind of the new kid on the block you know Walther's first underlever they've done a pretty damn good job of that thing without doubt um, make your own mind up guys seriously um, shoot them get out there and, and shoot them go to your gun dealer and have a go of all three you know weigh up the options versus price you know and what what sort of application you're going to use it for but this TX200 HC um, it's the perfect hunting underlever I'd say the perfect hunting underlever um, and the fact that it's got that shrouded silence barrel is an absolute bonus um, great great gun that's it guys that's your rack and load review of the TX200 HC by Air Arms thanks for watching see ya